the meeting. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How's it going? Good morning, Good morning everybody. Good morning. Um, so it looks like we have a quorum. We've got four out of the five commissioners here. Um, I want to go ahead and get started because I know I've I've got another meeting to jump to at 10. Um, and Joy is not here yet, but that's going to be, I think, the, the bulk of this meeting is going to be her presenting the, uh, the audit. Um, but she's not here yet. Um, so in the meantime, um, anybody for public comment? Actually, if I if I if I might pick on somebody, um, uh, Nolan, if you want to introduce yourself, um, so Nolan's a resident of the district uh, who's interested in joining the commission. Hey everyone, so nice to meet you. My name is Nolan. Um, <laughs> I live next to um, Dave, so I heard about you guys through Dave and Charlotte. Um, but very nice to meet you all. Good morning. All right. Um, let's go ahead and move on to approval of the minutes from March. Somebody want to make a motion? Motion to approve. Second. I'll, I'll second. All right. Just for the notes, so I, I had Jesse making the motion and then Tim seconding and also Charlotte, but I think Tim was first. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> ha! I win, Charlotte. <laughs> hey, hey, Cindy, since, yes. for, since we have Nolan here and he's interested in joining the commission, should everybody maybe introduce themselves to him? Yeah, let's do that. Um, <laughs> so, um, so I'm Cindy. I am the economic development manager at Rogers Park Business Alliance. So I'm, I'm as part of that, I'm also the program manager for SSA 19, 54, and 43. Um, so 19 is Howard Street and Jarvis, 54 is Sheridan Road, uh, and 43 is um, West Ridge, Devon Avenue. Um, and yeah, um, happy to be here, happy to have you. Who wants to go next? All right, I'll go next uh, since it was my idea. Hi, Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Sandy Price. I'm the executive director of the Rogers Park Business Alliance. Um, I uh, pop in and out of these meetings, but I'm always here when there's... Um, something related to financials. So audit, budget, that kind of stuff. So welcome. Thank you. Uh, right. I'll throw it to Jesse. Hi, Nolan. Uh, I'm Jesse. I am the Director of Marketing and Communications with Bukovic. We're a large Northside property management um, with a lot of businesses uh, on Howard, north of Howard, or a lot of communities. Um, my first SSA meeting was March, 2022, and it was Charlotte and Cindy and Sandy and their conversations here that made me want to get involved. So join, you're gonna love it. There's a lot of good stuff that happens here and and it's a good group. I had to market the SSA as well. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, I'll go next. I'm Charlotte Walters, I'm the owner of Lost Eras, and um, it's been in the same location for 50 years. And um, I'm interested in being with this group because um, we're interested in promoting our neighborhood and keeping it safe. Um, okay, I can go next. I'm Dave Scora. I'm a longtime resident, uh, and I've known Nolan since he uh, and his partner moved in, uh, and he's been very, very uh, active in trying to uh, help with a number of neighborhood projects. So I think he would be a, a welcome addition um, to the SSA. Thanks, Dave. I'll go next. Um, hi, I'm Tim. I'm Tim Amos. Um, my, I'm the co-artistic director of the Factory Theater. I also okay. live on Howard Street, so I'm a neighborhoodite like uh, most of the rest of the people in here. Um, and it's just important to the Factory to be part of this community, so come see a show sometime. Come see what we do. Um, grab a drink at Howard Street Brewery. I'm always at Soul Cafe. They have amazing coffee. 
um, go to Charmers. Um, everybody here runs great businesses. Um, so it'd be great to have you. Don't let the process of becoming a commissioner intimidate you. You're going to hate your life, but it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> so a, lot, awesome. a lot of paperwork. Yeah. And I'll throw it to Allie because I've never officially met you either. So hi, nice to see your face. Hi, I'm Allie. I am I'm Allie Brisbane. I am not a commissioner, but I'm happy to introduce myself. Um, I'm with Muse Community Design. We are an urban planning and public engagement firm, and we are so excited to be working with our PBA um, and the SSA on the One Howard Street planning mm -hmm. project, which is a result of the RISE grant. So I think I'm later in the agenda, so I will sit tight, but I will also share that I'm an Edgewater resident a former aldermanic staffer and former uh, chamber staffer and just really love any chance I get to work with Sandy and Cindy and the crew at our PBA. So happy to be here. Thanks to being here. And, and I, I might actually propose moving your agenda item earlier so that you don't have to sit the whole whole time and, and wait on, uh, on everything else. Um, I see Kyle just joined. Um, we're going through introductions really quick because we have a new prospective commissioner on the call, Nolan. Um, so we just wanted to uh, have everybody introduce themselves sort of for, for his benefit. Hey, Nolan, I'm Kyle. I'm in <coughs> economic development for the 49th Ward with the Alderwoman Head. Thanks. All right, I think that's everybody. No, we haven't had Julianne yet. Yep. Hey guys, sorry, I was a few minutes late. Um, I'm Julianne, I'm with A5 at Branding and Digital. Um, so we are the uh, branding agency and I personally run um, the Howard Street social media website, um, Google ads and whatnot. So nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. And this is Waffles. She loves it when I'm on Zoom meetings. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I think now that's, that's everybody. So, um, I, I did want to um, run through the the update on the One Howard Street project um, with Allie here before we launch into the the items in need of a vote. Um, so I, I think you know I've 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 been sort of spamming everybody with reminders about the um, our first public workshop coming up on Saturday. Uh, we'll be at Willie White from ten to noon, uh, which we we scheduled intentionally to overlap with the uh, the 49th Ward Clean and Green Day because we know people will be out um, doing stuff as part of that, um, and we're hoping to get you know not just you know people signing up to come but but walk up traffic because um, this isn't going to be like a you know sit in a room and watch a PowerPoint slides kind of meeting. This is going to be interactive. We'll have stations set up uh, with activities for folks. Um, so yeah, I, I wanted to invite Ali to to talk to the group uh, a little bit more you know, about, about that and also the project more generally. Um, so yeah, take it away. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll give a high level <clears throat> overview of the project and Saturday's event and then welcome any questions. Um, cause I probably won't hit every detail, but <clears throat> so Muse, um, is leading the effort on one Howard street. And I think it's also worth noting that some of you may know the founding principal of Muse, Courtney Kashima. She formerly uh, managed SSA number 19 back in the day. So um, you might start seeing her around on the street. I know she popped in to say hi to a few business owners uh, last week. And we are working with two additional sub-consultants. One is Revitalized Communities, and they specialize in um, market analysis, housing analysis, and the founder, Yolanda Boucher, uh, has a background. She worked at the EPA for a long time and a background in brownfields and um, historic preservation. And then MKSK is our, another partner for our team. They're a landscaping and plan, they're landscape architecture and urban planning firm. And they're leading our process when it comes to the built environment and thinking about um, kind of the elements on the street, how the street makes us feel and ways to um, design for safety for all users of Howard Street. Um, so we're, we're really just kind of kicking off the process. And I think this workshop on Saturday, we're pretty excited. We're trying to lean into 
the symbolism of Earth Day and planting a seed and planting hope. And then the nice thing is that we will have our plan finished in, um, I believe in September, and we'll kind of round out the process with a celebration for the community, kind of launching the plan. So harvesting what we plant in April. Um, we are also going to launch a digital survey, which I'm sure Cindy will share with you all and ask you to continue to put out through your networks. And then this summer, we plan to do a lot of corridor activations and just kind of pop up, whether it's at an event like Chalk Howard or if it's us creating an event. Um, I got excited by the kind of overgrown diamond, uh, like baseball diamond at Willie White and thought like a kickball, like a Howard Street kickball tournament or something could be really fun. So um, we're definitely open to ideas and um yeah, I think just any 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 ideas you have or ways that your organization or business can tap into the process, we're open to it. We are um, I'm meeting later today with a few people from Gail's school um, to make sure that we're connecting with young people. So, yeah, just really excited. And yeah, this is not too far from my home. So this area means a lot to me as well. So I'm looking forward. Any uh, any questions or anything about about the project about you know anything related to it the event Saturday um, any anything at all that's, that's sort of germane to this uh, you know before we move on. Um, I understand there was a first meeting, and I wondered if you could recap that. We did have a steering committee meeting, I think, late February. Um, yeah, it was, there was a lot of excitement and enthusiasm. I think the other thing I left out and part of why we are so excited about the project is the collaboration between Chicago and Evanston. So having Kyle from all the Roman Haddon's office at all of our team meetings and having the economic development team from Evanston at all of our meetings and just seeing how all of like that kind of that level of leadership is like all in bringing all of the resources they have at their disposal to make this good, I think is really um, has just felt really good to me as a neighbor who cares about communities, just seeing true collaboration. So the kickoff steering committee meeting was really kind of introductory and just trying to get an understanding of what these stakeholders feel um, are the issues and opportunities on Howard Street. Um, so a lot of ideas and I think some things came up like how, and we're gonna kind of move forward with the plan in this way, how Howard Street sort of has these different kinds of zones and things as you move from East to West, the feel is different. Um, the streetscape is different, things like that. That was a big part. Uh, safety, community safety was obviously um, a major talking point. And so something that we're gonna be thinking about, um, I forget her name, but someone from Legacy Barber College was on the call and mentioned that they do a lot of restorative justice work. Um, so really trying to, you know, link into everything, kind of think expansively about safety and, and how we get there. Um, so yeah, I think it was the first steering committee meeting was kind of introductory and just getting a sense of people who are on the street all day. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? Okay. And how many uh, steering committee meetings might there be? Is there a schedule? There will be three. Um, and so they're aligned with some of our key deliverables. So the next steering committee meeting is in early May, and they'll be reviewing uh, our draft existing conditions report and vision draft vision plan. And then there will be one later in the process. And I believe our contract and part of the grant with the state is that the project wraps up by end of October, perhaps. So we're aiming to put out the put out a plan in September. Another, I think there's also just a lot of exciting things that are already happening on Howard Street that we 
see as ways to kind of tie them into the planning process and into kind of like quick wins that we can sort of claim as part of this plan. So um, I'm assuming that Cindy and Sandy have talked about main streets. Um, so they came to one of our team meetings and it feels very aligned with the work that our team is doing. So we're figuring out how they can play a role in setting up Howard Street to implement and see through recommendations in the plan. And I think that's where they have a lot of strengths. Um, and there's, yeah, I mean, just development that's currently happening, business attraction efforts, just getting everyone talking. And that's really um, a big part of how we're approaching this is just trying to get people on both sides of the street talking to each other and making sure that um, there's a shared language and a shared vision for all of Howard. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions on One Howard Street before we move on? I see Joy just joined the meeting. Um, so I think we might move uh, audit up uh, next. Uh, so we're shuffling the order of the agenda items here a little bit, but, uh, but uh, yeah, Ali, thanks for being here. Um, and yeah, just my final plug, you know, hope to see all of you um, on Saturday. Um, and we'll be sharing uh, the link to the online survey when that launches um, on Saturday as well. All right. Thank you, Ali. Uh, welcome, Joy. Um, Joy, do you need to screen share? I can stop uh, sharing my screen if you need to get the report up. Yeah, I'm getting there. All right, thanks. There we go. Yes, if you could uh, share um, share the screen. Uh, you should be able to now. I just stopped screen sharing mine. Okay, can you see that, Cindy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, Okay, so let me just introduce myself. Um, my name is Joy Coombs, and I work um, an auditor that works uh, for a CPA firm, Almanza and Coombs. And we were contracted to perform the 2022 independent audit of special service area number 19. So that is what you see on your screen. I'm just gonna roll through um, the financials. I'm saying it like that because it seems out of order here. I think I picked the one that's out of order. Um, but we can still work through it. Um, basically, this is just uh, just a little tidbit that um, um, each SSA is required to have an independent audit performed annually. And, um, and then um, that independent audit is presented to the commission um, and then um, Cindy, once we finalize the audit, she will upload it to the city of Chicago. So they have it um, to meet the requirements. Um, so first is just the uh, header page. The table of contents will walk through. Um, the first statement here is the fund balance. So basically this is kind of like your checkbook. Um, the end of 2022, SSA 19 end of the year with $87,000 of cash. Um, they will be receiving or have received some of this $430,000 of property tax uh, levies and late collections. And you'll see a couple of intercompany between the multiple SSAs that Rogers Park manages on the balance sheet as well. So, <clears throat> What we look at is that this number here, this number $826,000 is the number carried over from 2022 into 2023. Um, this number tells me a couple of things. One is um, potentially is this SSA going to be uh, renewed soon? Yes, no. No, no, it was just renewed two years ago. Okay, so that could be the other thing is that, or, or the intention of the commission was to, um, um, kind of utilize their reserves because, um, as of December twenty two, um, there was only eight hundred twenty six dollars of reserves rolling into, um, rolling into twenty twenty three. 
Um, so Joy, this was this this was the situation where we hadn't gotten our second uh, tax yeah. well, bills in, and so we were trying to be really careful on spending because we were kind of tight. Yeah. So so that and that's fine. So. Um, that is one of the um, avenues you could take or stance you could take. Some of the SSAs, I agree with you. Some of the SSAs said, hey, we're gonna, we want to continue services in our neighborhood and we're okay eating into our reserves. So that's perfectly fine, especially, in, like you said, in a situation of receiving the cash, um, you know, six to five months de delayed. So that's fine. So the other reason why it might be is sometimes if you're going for reconstitution and you know that this SSA is going to terminate and a new one will start, you'll also drive down the monies as well. So that's fine. Um, so we're just going to roll forward to, there's a printing problem there. Okay. The next page here is the, basically like the profit and loss, think of it that way. The column that says government funds, what it's telling us is that um, SSA 22 did receive um, unencumbered property tax revenue or earned $296,000. Um, they expended $343,000. So they basically kind of utilized their reserves to the tune of $47,000. So what that means is in the early part of 2022, SSA 19 did have $48,000 in reserves they depleted or utilized those reserves, driving it down to a, a minimum amount carried into the next year, which is fine because then you get the influx of that second installment. Supplementary information. Um, this is probably the most important one that the city looks at. This is comparison of actual versus budget. So the amount of levies that was brought in or earned was 296,000. Um, and the budget was 319,000. Um, and this is basically this $23,000 difference really identifies um, late and lost collections. Um, it's, it's based upon historicals. It doesn't mean that this will continue. It just means that when they looked back at 2021, which let's see what that, yep. When they look back at 2021, they being the city, what they do is historically look back and say, um, did they receive all the levy in the past? Well, in 2021, you can see that there was a $37,000 that wasn't received. That doesn't mean it'll never be received. It just may be received late. And so when they rolled to 2022, um, the late and lost collections is actually getting better. So that means that you are receiving those funds. They're just coming in a little bit um, longer. Take, it's taking more time. So I wouldn't be too alarmed, but... The one thing I did notice is that, I see too alarmed, is that, and, and Sandy probably would be able to speak to this more than I could, is that the um, allowance for uncollectability is going up. Um, I believe it's about 10 close to 10%. And where you can see that is here on the balance sheet. This tells me here that, see how this, this number increased. So the allowance for uncollectability of the taxes was 15,000 in 2021. And now in 2022, the city's increasing it to 26,000. So there's something I'm hoping it's not just guessing on the city's part. There's something that is driving that reduction in the collection of um, property taxes. It could be, um, there could be development there like, um, um, uh, tearing down of some old properties that were that were being taxed um, and then developing new properties, developing those properties, but yet they're not been turned over to the actual uh, ending taxpayers. So that could be, and that could be this drive up of a, of a uncollectability. I mean, it's not that it's absolutely deemed it will never be collected, it's just an estimate saying, based upon the historicals, the uncollectability is going up. So I don't know if there's something, if, if Sandy or Cindy could speak to possibly why that might be the case. It doesn't, it could be a fluke too. It could be just that the payments are being delayed um, and it could start uh, turning back around in the next couple of years. If we start to see that, then we know it was just a kind of like a blip and 
um, has more to do with that late collection than anything else. Yeah, we, I, I, <clears throat> I don't have an answer for why. Okay. Um, I could just tell you that we um, are, we fluctuate considerably in all of our SSAs on this side. And, and I don't know, I don't know why it is. I don't know if more people are applying for their tax exemptions or, you know, yeah. I, I don't yeah. know what the situation yeah. is, but we have hit like, you know, 25% in the past in other SSAs. So, and I don't know why. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it could just be that um, there's a backlog in, for some reason in the um, settling of those protested taxes too. And I, I would, like you said, I wouldn't know why it would be, you know, it could be just, just in general, there's a protest. I mean, there's a backlog of protests and settling those. Um, and so maybe in some of the other SSAs I work with, they don't have as many protest taxes. I mean, that could be the case, but you can see that as long as they are managing the SSA, I'm going to roll back to this uh, budget page, as long as they being SSA 19 commissioners and the management are, are um, managing the um, SSA in compliance with their actually receiving um, and not to the actual budget. So what that means is be careful because you're, um, you're, you're spending pretty high here um, with only the receipt of 296 uh, and then 257. And I thought that the budget went up even higher in 2023. Did you uh, did you expand or? or so it, as part of the um, of the renewal of this SSA that we did in 2020, we added territory. So the uh, the Jarvis Square portion of the SSA was was added. And I think this is the first tax year. Um, that they're part of the levy. Okay, makes perfect sense because the way I know that is because which you can't see blankly here, but when we go back to the balance sheet, you'll see the difference between this 288 that was in 2021. So and end of 2021, there were only $288,000 of property taxes forthcoming. Um, but in 2022, there's four, uh, 40,000, uh, 430,000. Some of that, yes, is the late collection, uh, but also, actually, it's more apparent here, down below here. There is an increase on the levy from 288 to 372, so almost $100,000 increase. Um, and Cindy just explained it because we um, expanded our area, and so they'll be getting more property taxes, which is great because it's almost so you did good. You you ran out, kind of, you ran out your reserves but you also have a higher amount forthcoming. So it's easy to build the reserve back up. Um, some people have different opinions about the reserve. That's why I was saying that some SSAs, they, hold, they take the stance where we wanna use all our money um, in the neighborhood as much as we can. And some other SSAs say, well, well, we would like to hold some in reserve. So as long as you have a little bit in reserves, you're fine. And it's great that you know next year, 2023, you're pulling in hundred grand more. So you'll build back up to a, a little bit of a cushion. That's good. Do you have, um, um, excuse me, do you have any idea of how much extra revenue we will be getting um, from the Jarvis area? So it looks like just by looking at this balance sheet, I could tell you that it looks close to a hundred thousand. Okay. So the know. way I look at it is this deferred property tax revenue line what that represents is this is the collective collectible levy. So in the 2021 year, the 288, that was what was deemed collectible levy for 2021. And so what they deemed as collectible levy for 2022 is 372. And since we receive them a year behind, that's what you'll be getting more or less. That's what you'll be getting in 2023. So uh, actually over 100,000, no, under, sorry. Uh, so about $90,000 more, it looks like. Okay. But keep in mind, there's that little bit of swing that Sandy was talking about that um, if it's um, if it's an area that they deem that would be highly collectible, then you will get close to 372. If it's an area that has a lot of transition, development, you know, vacancies, all kinds of things play into that. 
if they're repurposing buildings, so it could be a little bit lower than that 372. Um, do you have it's, any idea how much, excuse me, do you, um, do you have any idea how much uh, uh, tax we are collecting from the vacant lot over where the garden is at Howard and Ashland is a huge piece of property. It's I'm, city owned, so I'm pretty sure it's zero. Nothing, nothing. Okay, uh, that's what I thought. <laughs> Yeah, see, those are the kinds of things that Cindy and Sandy will know um, based upon those SSAs. It's good to know that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so this is budget versus actual. So, like you see, um, um, SSA 19 did receive and earn 296000 on a budget of 319 So, this is your deemed uncollectible or late collection. Uh, they expended 343 versus a budget of 411 is great. Um, there was one finding on this page that just squeaked in this one little item. Um, and, and Cindy can look at it with me in case there was like, oh, Julie, this one item really should go up top or something. Then it would get rid of this finding right now. All it means is that we expended a little bit more in that line item than budgeted. But as you can see overall, uh, and that's the most important thing to the city is that you're not expending more than it was approved budget by city council. And, and you're definitely not. Um, we're required to show 2021 uh, for comparative purposes. So you can see we had one little squeak over last year, not a big deal. Like I said, you're still not spending more than the budget. Here's my pages out of order. This is the, our audit opinion. So basically what we do is we, we form an opinion based upon the books and records and from inquiry um, that the uh, financial statements uh, presented as a whole um, would not mislead the user of those financials. And so once we finalize this, we'll sign here and we'll slap our letterhead on this as well. Mm, that's cover page. There was one more page. Oh, I bet you, yeah, these, I duplicated them all. Okay, let's see. There is one more findings page. These are just the notes. Let me get to, the yellow just means I have to update. Okay, oh, I just ran past it. Now we're gonna figure out how to get it big again. Um, here we go. And what's over here? I gotta drag it back. Oh, sorry, I think it went off the page. Oh. Okay, can you see that again now? Yes. Okay, <clears throat> great. Oh, that's just my one page though. Hmm. Okay, I lost it. Um, one second, I gotta figure out where it's at. Actually, okay, actually, can you see this page? Those findings. Uh, we're still yeah. looking at the uh, the city uh, DPD checklist. Okay. Um, oh, how about this? Can you see that now? Uh, schedule summary of findings. Is that what we're supposed to be yes, looking at? Perfect. This is what this is what I wanted to see. Um, <clears throat> so okay, so these are just just so you know, um, these aren't financial findings. These are just findings in compliance with the uh, City of Chicago Department of Planning and Development guide book guidelines. And so there was only one finding, and it was just that we did expend a little bit more in one budget category. 
uh, and that's it. And that's and like I said, that's not a huge that's not a huge deal because we did not exceed the budget overall. So there's only one finding, um, and and that was similar to last year. It was just one finding, one budget category exceeded. But otherwise, everything is in good shape. Um, any questions? I know the pages were out of order. I apologize for that. No, it's fine. I think you explained everything really well, and I appreciate that. Certainly. Okay, so um, if there are any questions, you can definitely reach out to Cindy or Sandy, and they can provide my contact information. I'm more than happy to go through the audit in um, more detail or in the right order <laughs> um, <clears throat> or anything else that I can help you with. Please feel free. Well, I was just wondering, is there uh, somebody that you can contact to find out about the delinquent payments? <clears throat> so what, what really happens is this, is um, we <clears throat> Sandy and Cindy will monitor it because they'll know because they're getting the cash in. And obviously they have to be able to react um, to or pivot based upon the cash coming in, like if they need to make changes in their budget. So they'll know, I mean, it's it's almost May, so they've received their whole entire first installment. And so that will kind of tell them where they're on track or not um, for uh, the receipt. So long story short is no, and probably nobody in the city can tell you. It's, it's a lot of it is um, um, fluctuates based upon the, a lot of those um, um, protests being whether they're awarded uh, or not. And so then if the, if the protests are not awarded, uh, meaning they did not get a decrease in their property taxes, then they will come in late collections. So I wouldn't be too alarmed about it. And like Cindy was saying, there is some development going on there and it sounds like there's a piece uh, in there that's not paying in. So like I said, I wouldn't be alarmed about it. And if it's historically, if it continues, then there must be something which Sandy and I could chat about or Cindy, they're either the levy, the levy has been um, reestablished, not the levy, the assessed value has been reestablished and the city just hasn't implemented that. Meaning I've seen in other SSAs where their EAV is still, their assessed value is still lower than the actual. So they're actually receiving more funds than they anticipated. But then there's also the flip side where SSA's EAV has been decreased and their decrease hasn't uh, stabilized yet. So what you're gonna see probably, what I would assume what you're gonna see is that the city will start um, letting SSA 19 know that uh, the budgeted levy is gonna start decreasing. And so then what will happen is that latent loss collection will go away because they've decreased the budget. But on the flip side, if they decrease the budget, you've already implemented expansion. So it's kind of like it's it's taking care of it um, tenfold because the allowance is only 20,000, but your ex extension gave you an extra hundred. So if anything, you know, you come out ahead by the $80,000. So you're, you're only gonna be able to provide additional services. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I just ask Charlotte? Charlotte, I'm sorry, Joey. Charlotte, is your concern that people aren't paying their taxes or is your concern how much money the SSA is taking in? No, my concern is, well, you know, I think the theory is that probably a lot of businesses um, were closed, you know, for, because of the pandemic and therefore they didn't pay their rent. So because of that, you know, the property owner most likely is short on money to pay the taxes. And I was thinking that eventually the, the funds will come in. Yeah, we, we, every year, yeah, every, we, get, we get money from five years ago. So and, we get, when, when we get, oh yeah, when we get a, when we get a, every yeah, month. Those, those late collections. Right, every yeah. month, every month we get, we get notification that money is put into the bank account. And every month also, they send us, they send us a list of what is the current year what is last year? What is the year before? What is the year before? You right. know, so so people right. are people are people do catch up, right? But why they're not paying? That there could be a variety it's, of reasons. Why well, guess. I, was, I was wondering if there's a maybe a federal um, some sort of a federal grant that we could apply for 
um, to assist in those missing funds? There's well, not. No, I there's, think it there's, is correcting a little bit. I think the blip is. for the COVID in that happened in 2021, and that's why you saw that it jumped up to like 37,000 uncollectible. Mm -hmm. And now I think it's going to start stabilizing a little bit. Yeah. And probably won't notice it as much because of the expansion. So it's, it's going to kind of take care of itself. But I think Sandy's right. It is historically, there is that uncollectability of close to 20%. Mm -hmm. 20,000. Yeah. And the other thing, Charlotte, moving forward, if these developments are approved, right, yeah. we're going to have, we're going to have properties that have been vacant that are not paying property taxes that will yeah. eventually yeah. start kicking in their share. And in, right. in, in, in the case of the, of the city owned lot at Howard and Ashland, like that would potentially be a property that's effectively new to the tax rolls that doesn't exist now. Um, but if a building gets built, that is a building that will pay property tax um, yeah. and, and ditto with, um, you know, potentially the, the Howard and Paul Linus site as well. Like there's a building there now, but they're going to build a bigger one is mm -hmm. the proposal. Um, well, so even if, if they are getting, even if they are getting some, some incentives from the state, that will potentially also add to the tax base for the SSA. Well, if it's going to be a hundred units, affordable housing, um, will it be taxed? Yeah, yes. they still pay property tax. Mm -hmm. um, the developer will does. It a, will it be a, um, a federal, um, a I federal love project? Cat. I love it. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think there is some some state and federal money and incentives that they're that they've applied for that they're you know waiting to hear. But if it if it gets built, it they still have to pay property tax to the city and county. It's the county that collects the property uh -huh. taxes. And it would be really nice if, um, you know, at one time we were uh, looking for a developer for the property at Howard and Ashland. And I think we should really, um, you know, put an effort toward that because we could sure use the extra revenue. So we, we have been doing that for a while. And so the, the, there's a, a community meeting on April 26th for the Howard and Polina development. Uh -huh. And we've heard that Maria is going to have a community meeting after the April 26th meeting to talk about the Howard Ashland site. Good. Yeah. It's, Kyle, it's I, 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 I was going to say, Kyle, I, I don't know if you have anything to add on that. Um, I, I, you know, I've just been sort of promoting the, the, the event on the 26th. Yeah. Um, Howard and Ashland is is still taking some time, and we will announce it to the neighborhood when we have some more solid information for you guys. But we are working on it diligently, and everybody should be pleasantly surprised when they see it. That's good news. Yeah, I Thank think you. it's always good news when you see any sort of development. You're you're going to start going up, right? More development breeds more development. So. Well, it's, one it's, thing for sure, we definitely need housing in, on Howard Street. Yeah. Okay, so um, if there's not any questions, I'm going to hop off and put my pages in order. Um, but nice to see everybody. And Thanks like I said, lot. if you have anything, questions, whatever, uh, just please, please feel free to reach out. Thank you, Joy. Thanks, Joy. Thank you. Thanks, Joy. I stopped sharing. Oh, there's everybody. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. All right. Um, I'll just, um, I'll share the agenda again, just to sort of, you know, keep pace with where we're at. Um, <clears throat> but, um, but yeah, we, we, you know, sort of the next step is that we do need uh, someone to make a motion to, uh, to uh, accept and approve uh, the report uh, from Joy so that we can submit it to the city. I'll motion to approve the um, the audit. I'll second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right, thanks everybody. Um, the next sort of item in need of a vote, um, which is number four on here, um, Soul Cafe criminal damage rebate. Um, so this is um, a request that came in under the um, criminal damage repair um, rebate that that we created last year and and 
this and, and all of our SSAs in response to some of the issues that folks were having about uh, storefront windows getting damaged. Um, Still Cafe was, was one of those businesses um, and has submitted a police report from an incident in September uh, where their plate glass windows were damaged by gunfire. Um, the replacement cost of those windows is 4,500. Um, the maximum limit um, under the program guidelines uh, is $2,000. Um, since it is over 500, um, I'm bringing that to this group to vote approval on the requested rebate. Uh, they've provided the documentation needed, which is the, um, the invoice before and after pictures and the police report from the incident. Um, so, and they're requesting how much? Uh, it's so it's it would be two thousand, which is the max. Um, so it's fifty percent up to two thousand dollars. The total repair costs for the incident were forty five hundred. I'll move to approve. I'll second that. Uh, all right. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Yeah, and sort of just as a you know point of reference, so this is our second such request that's come in this year under the program. The first one was uh, our our public house from the incident where they had had a brick thrown through a window. Um, so that that incident was a bit more recent. Um, I've also been in contact with. Um, the new business, Hungry Mama, um, that opened, um, he reached out to me that he found a bullet hole in a window um, that that he's looking to get get fixed as well. So I, I sent him the program info and uh, contacts for some glass companies. So that one may be coming, um, just so you know. Um, and then also like Howard Street Brewery has a has a window that's that's a you know because they're they're double pane windows, so like the outside pane got got smashed. But the inside one's okay, so it's he's kind of been leaving it for a while. But but I, I had that conversation with Chuck as well. Just um, you know, it's sort of an unfortunate reality we've you know that we're dealing with with this sort of stuff. But but that's why we created a program for it. Um, so you know, keeping an eye on it as as we head into summer. Um, I also have been in contact with both Hungry Mama and uh, Beauty Supply Place on Howard West of the tracks. Um, that are interested in maybe pursuing regular BIPs um, for upcoming meetings. So they've they've been given all the information and some contractor referrals. So we, we may have some BIPs coming, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right, um, so we did audit, we did Soul Cafe rebate, um, we did RISE grant. Um, quick landscaping update before we launch into social media for the last 10 minutes. Um, so we do have a new landscape vendor for this year. Um, balanced environments, they should be doing cleanup and spring plantings this week, um, weather permitting. Um, we've been in contact with them. Um, it was delayed a little bit because there was some miscommunication between the RFP and the contract, um, where the RFP says you're going to do spring plantings. The contract ended up saying fall. Um, so we were like, no, it's, it's supposed to be spring, like get a spring plants. So they had to kind of hustle and and secure some some plant material for us because we typically do not do fall. Um, we do spring, summer, and then winter cleanup. So the summer kind of is is set up with the intention that it will last through the fall. Because um, when we've done it in the past with fall rotations, they they put in mums in early October, and then by the end of October they're putting in winter winter material. So it's it's kind of not really worth it. Um, has been our experience. So we instead just ask them to do summer plants that'll that'll kind of stick around. Um, but just so you know, we, we have shared with them, you know, that that is the intention and also um, to do what they can uh, with regard to the in-ground planters to, to try and do rat mitigation through landscaping and mulching, because uh, we know that's been a concern, um, particularly in areas near those in-ground planters. One thing that we should, um, one thing that we could plan for is um, we're going to have to do a power washing after this um, big construction. Yes. And, they're, and that, they're supposed to be done May 7th. We'll see. Yeah, and that's partly why I haven't scheduled the spring power washing yet, because it doesn't make sense to do until the construction's kind of cleared out. Yeah, exactly. And how's the banners coming along? When are we um, going to have the banners? 
So that that's a question for Julianne because we just wrapped up photography. Um, we can sort of launch into your sort of section of the of the meeting here. I'll stop screen sharing if you want to get slides up. Yep, let me throw up the slides. Um, so yeah, we wrapped up photography. Um, we had two days of photography. Um, it was two half days on the 29th and 30th of March. So our photographer is currently editing the photos. Um, and once we get those back, we'll be able to move into um, swapping out those street banners, updating the creative, um, and looking into getting the bus shelters up as well. Oh, do you have a timeline on that? I We should have the final uh, photography by the end of this week. So I'd say we can kind of kick off, Cindy and I can kick off conversations regarding the uh, street banners within the next week or so. Um, and then from there, it won't take too much time to swap out the creative and, and update it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been a minute. OK, it's been too long for the all these empty pole banners. It doesn't look good at all. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Hear you. Uh, we're working on it. Just waiting for that brand new photography. And it's a, the photo shoot, uh, it went really well. So we, we have some great new shots to use. Are you coordinating? Can't wait yeah. to see them. Are the banners being coordinated or fed any way into that one Howard corridor process? <laughs> So not yet. Um, one of the things that we are working on, and actually the meeting that I am jumping on at 10, uh, is with the city of Evanston. Uh, they are forming an SSA for their side of the street. The Evanston Thrives report um, that they just commissioned for uh, retail revitalization citywide includes recommendations for Howard Street that include adopting our existing branding and logo, including for the banners. So the hope is that once they form their SSA um, next year, We'll be expanding sort of our, the look of our banners um, will be consistent across both sides of the street. Um, but it's not happening yet because they're still in the process of forming uh, the SSA for the Evanston side of the street, uh, which will eventually fund the installation of those banners. Okay. So is it fair to say that within the next 30 days, we should have the banners up? I mean, there. once we get the art um, from the photographer and from Julianne and her team, then I'll have to order them from banner company to fabricate them. Um, and I don't know what the lead time is on that at this time, um, but it's it, we are working on it. Are we gonna use, uh, still use Bannerville? I am reaching out to a couple of other companies. So Sandy and I were just at a conference for Main Streets uh, a couple weeks ago, and we talked to a couple of other banner vendors there okay. that use different material that's supposed to yeah. maybe be a bit more durable. Uh, so we're looking at reaching out to those companies as well for pricing. Good. Great. Yeah, I was kind of thinking that maybe the materials that they're not strong enough for our wind, um, you know, because we're like in a wind corridor. Yeah, I actually, so one of the things that I, I learned at the conference, just from talking to some of the other, you know, business district managers and, and some of the other vendors, um, you know, we've been using vinyl, um, at least as long as I've been here for our banners. Um, and that's really meant for temporary installations. The the preferred method for, for banners that are going to be up for a long time, they rec recommend products like marine acrylic. Um, or if you're not doing full color, something like a sunbrella um, that's supposed to last longer, but that's that's canvas and kind of limits what you can print. Um, but it's depend you know depending on how the pricing comes back, um, you know I think I'd I'd like to to see if we can do the marine acrylic or something something similar because they do have longer warranties on those products. Uh -huh. So we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, you know, we could also we could also check with a you know a, other SSAs to see what banners they're using, what companies. Yeah, and and we have um you know because there there's a part of it is that you've got to have a local company to do the installation, whether or not they do the fabrication themselves. Um, there's really only two or three in town that people use for that installation. So it's Bannerville, who we've been using, Liberty Flag and Banner, and the Chicago Event Graphics are kind of the big three. 
Uh Um, but you know, maybe we could work with, with one of the other manufacturers to, you know, fabricate and ship us the banners. And then one of those groups puts them up. Uh, so we're looking at our options. Okay, good. Thanks. Cool. With a hard stop at 10, should we ask Julianne to just send us her deck? Yeah. And I, I think I, I she did earlier and I, I shared the deck with okay. everybody. I don't know if you if you've got okay. you know particular highlights to share. Major highlights would just be all of the love that we're seeing on this post um, regarding the Sick Fisher mural. So a, a bunch of you commented on it as well. So we appreciate the love and that post did great. We're at nearly, you know, 350 likes. So awesome and great to see everyone engaged. And um, that's pretty much the highlight. Let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> and, and can I add? Can I add that uh, Howard Street and uh, Jarvis Square was all over WGN yesterday. Yes, they, yeah. they, I, they I sent that. those links yeah. around in an email that. yesterday. Yeah. Um, that was super cool. Yeah, yeah. always yeah. good to see. They did a day in Rogers Park or whatever it was they did, so it was great. If you haven't seen it, it was uh, uh, Charmers, Kamai, uh, Misericordia, and Chuck from. Um, Howard Street Brewery. Mm-hmm. And you can find them all on YouTube. And did you Recycle, share, did you Recycle share? was in there oh, too. And the Recycle Ring. Yeah. Did you share yeah. links, Cindy? I did. I, that was emailed out mm-hmm. to everybody yesterday. If you if you missed it, let me know and I'll send it again. Excuse yeah, me. That was great. Yeah, no, Our that was terrific. That was terrific. And I understand those are supposed to go up on the on the social media site too. Yes. Yep. Yep. We'll get those up. Okay. That was great. Yeah, SSA nineteen representing big on uh, on WGN yesterday. I think the only the only non SSA nineteen uh, business featured was Misericordia. Um, on that, quickly, Sandy or or Cindy, can we send them a thank you letter to the reporters or in, in WGN news? That might be a nice little gesture for the future. <laughs> Uh, coverage things yeah like we that. could check with our uh, PR company they probably know somebody over there okay. yeah Anna, Anna mentioned that that I think she you know she or, or Silverman team had had worked with that particular reporter before um right. so I'm sure they'll have contact well, we've worked we've worked with G in the past she's she's yeah. actually been here and done walking tours of the community and stuff right yeah. so if her, Amy Rutledge if her I think boss, has been here too but yeah. yeah if her boss or somebody gets a thank you from us or from the alderman or something that would be I think a, a good thing. Sure. Great idea. Great. Thanks, Dave. All right. Anything else for the good of the order before we break? That is it. All right. Well, I hope to see some of you out on Saturday. If you're out, if you're around, um, I'll be out there. Um, We'll be doing some some trash pickup and some and some community engagement on corridor planning. So uh, we hope to see you soon. Um, and once the uh, once the online survey goes live, we'll be sharing that link as well. Thanks awesome. a lot, Cindy. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks you all. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.